Hi everyone, it's Molly Matthews here. It's my happy pleasure to read today for you a scene from chapter 5 of Claimed by the Sheik. And it's very, very close to when um, the hero has um, Tarek Nahasia, has the Sheik, the, the grand ruler of the kingdom of Nirvana, has come along and um, learned that his brother's child is now an orphan or um, uh, following a terrible, terrible car crash. So, uh, and he's about to meet an unexpected person. So let's continue. Three hours later, Melanie was wheeling her carry-on suitcase through the stark grey soulless walls of Paris's Hospital Nectar when she caught sight of Tarek Nahasia. Sheik Tarek Nahasia, she corrected herself as she took an abrupt step back, panic shooting through her in a splintering surge of shock. She froze as he feasted his dark, contemptuous gaze on her, too stunned to believe that he was really there. Too overwhelmed to comprehend that in the midst of this tragedy, the man she had once loved, with all her soul, stood before her. Too appalled that the man who had broken her heart, the man she had believed and hoped and prayed she would never see again, was advancing towards her. It was horrific, the worst of circumstances. She wanted to flee from the tainted memories that united them and stained their past. She wanted to run from the contamination of the choices she had made. She wanted to bolt from the danger he presented, but her black ankle boots felt glued to the sanitized linoleum floor. What are you doing here? She hurtled out. I am claiming my brother's son, he said with righteous arrogance. You, her voice rose beyond the bounds of what was acceptable in a hospital. You never wanted a child. Isn't that what you said when you threw me from your bed? You left. You gave me no choice. I wanted marriage, a man who would love me. Children, you didn't, not with a commoner. Melanie said without making eye contact, her voice trembling with hurt and regret. Tarek crossed his arms over his powerful chest. I never said that. You made that abundantly clear. I wanted to be your wife, not your convenient mistress, she gritted. I wasn't good enough, just like little Selim. Only he'll be worse, won't he? Selim's a half-caste. Your brother's royal blood tainted by a western whore. That's what your father called my sister, didn't he? She fired at him. But he was wrong. Zayed loved my sister. He married her against your father's wishes. She was his lawful wife, not his shameful wench. I feel nothing for you, she lied to herself as she pushed past Tarek and walked toward the glass wall, separating her from her son. Oh my God, Melanie bit her lip, blinking back tears as she looked at the small boy lying bandaged in the paediatric hospital bed. Her fingers trembled with longing, wanting to hold her son for the first time in her arms. Why does love always cause pain, she thought, looking up at Tarek and then back toward her son. She studied Selene's closed eyes, his dark lashes resting peacefully against his cheeks. His wild curly hair splayed upon the starched hospital linen. His cupid lips curved into a mercifully comatose dream. She was suddenly struck by how like Tarek he really was. God, we've created something beautiful. Where are the doctors? Nurses? Why isn't anyone here? She said, spinning around. They're preparing to leave, he said, exuding authority and a compelling magnetism that sent her pulse soaring. Leave? I don't understand. Where? Why? She stammered. I'm taking my brother's child back to Havana. Selim. His name is Selim. God, can't you even say his name? You're upset. Yes, I'm upset, she flew at him. My sister is dead, and now you want to take away my... She swallowed hard, 
forcing back the truth she yearned to speak, my only connection to her. Just like you always remove the things most important to me. Besides, you can't just take a three-year-old boy who has just survived a fatal car crash from the hospital. I can and I will. He'll die. How could she trust him when he had deceived her before? Selim will die if he stays in France, Tarek said, jabbing at the headlines in a newspaper lying on the waiting room table. The place is almost prehistoric. Hospital fire kills. Read it for yourself. Melanie scanned the paper and read the article out loud. A fire at a Paris hospital has killed 11 newborn babies. The blaze is believed to have been caused by electrical wiring. Her hand flew to her mouth. How oh, horrible! Oh my God, those poor, poor babies, those mothers! Her voice trailed off. Mother. She was a mother. It didn't seem real. It is already decided. Only I can ensure the child's protection. Not a muscle in Tarek's hard, handsome face moved, and feeling as though he'd slapped her, as though he too considered her unworthy of the title, Melanie looked away. My aides have assembled and flown to my kingdom, the most skilled medical staff in the world. Everything has been arranged. We lie. We leave in my private jet today. You can't just take my... She paused, frantically scrambling for the right words. How could she possibly reveal the truth? His wrath would be merciless. Oh, oh, what to do? Her deception would only make his resolve to claim her child stronger. You can't just take my sister's child like that. You have no more claim to him than I do. What about what I want? You, he almost spat the word, your sister murdered my brother. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Apologies for a bit of background noise. It's my beloved Lorenzo tidying the uh, manicure and the lawn. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little sequence and um, read on to find out what happened and why he's accusing Melanie of, of his sister murdering his brother. It's been Molly and that's been an excerpt from Claimed by the Sheik.